Hopefully you reviewed the first part of the homework on your own to review quadrants for different trig functions, solving equations, and the exact value of trig functions and inverse trig functions. And now we're going to put all of that information together in order to solve trig equations. So it says find the value of theta in the interval 0 to theta to 360 degrees. So right now we're in degrees. We will do some that are in radians, but for right now, as we're starting out, we're going to do degrees. If this particular question was 2x equals 1, we would just divide by 2. So nothing changes here because there's a cosine. I am going to divide both sides by 2. And we get cosine theta equals 1 half. So now I need to use the inverse function, or arc cosine. I also need to identify my quadrants. Cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So when you identify your reference angle using the arc function or the inverse function, you are then going to take that reference angle and find it in whatever quadrants are appropriate given the question. So my reference angle is equal to arc cosine of one half. Or you ask yourself, where is cosine equal to one half? And hopefully you know that cosine is equal to one half at pi over three or 60 degrees. So now theta is going to be in quadrant one and quadrant four. So 60 degrees, my reference angle is always the quadrant one angle, so I have 60 degrees. And in quadrant four, a reference angle of 60 degrees is 300 degrees. So those are my two values for this function or this equation. Number seven, if you need to on the side, set it up again. If this said negative 4x plus 5 equals 7, what would you do? So we're going to start by subtracting 5 on both sides. We get negative 4 sine theta equals 2. Divide by negative 4 on both sides. Sine theta is equal to negative 1 half. So now I need to know where is sine negative. Sine is negative in quadrant 3 and 4. My reference angle is going to be arc sine of one half. So where is sine equal to one half? Hopefully you know it's pi over six or 30 degrees. So my reference angle is 30 degrees in quadrant three, that's 210 degrees. And in quadrant four, that's 330 degrees. So those are my two values for theta. This one has cosecant. So remember, if you need to, if this said 4, x plus 2 equals x plus 14, you would start by distributing. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I have 4 cosecant theta plus 8 equals cosecant theta plus 14. I'm going to subtract 8 on both sides. 4 cosecant theta equals cosecant theta plus 6. I'm going to subtract cosecant theta on both sides because I want to group all of my trig functions together. So I have 3 cosecant theta equals 6. Divide both sides by 3. Cosecant theta equals 2. So we don't work with our reciprocal functions typically, so I'm going to turn this into its reciprocal. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So that means if cosecant theta is equal to 2, then sine theta is equal to 1 half. Sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, and my reference angle is going to be equal to arc sine of one half. 
where is sine equal to one half 30 degrees? We just did that in the last question. So you need to know your chart again. So in quadrant one, it's just my reference angle. And in quadrant two, it's 150 degrees. And then the last one is tangent. So if you need to, once again, this would be 3x minus 4 equals 5x minus 1. I'm going to start by adding 4 to both sides. There's multiple ways to solve, so if you wanted to start a different way, that would be okay. I have 3 tan theta equals 5 tan theta plus 3. I'm going to subtract that 5 tan theta to the other side because I want all my trig functions on one side and all my constants on the other side. 3 tan theta minus 5 tan theta gives me negative 2 tan theta. And then on my right side, I just have 3. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. So I get tan theta equals negative 3 halves. So tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. My reference angle is going to be equal to arc tan of 3 halves. Now, 3 halves is not one of the values from your chart. So this is when you're going to go to your calculator. So I'm going to take my calculator out. I'm working with degrees, so I want to make sure that my mode is set into degree mode. And arc tangent is the same thing as the inverse. So second tangent gives me that inverse, tan to the negative one power. That's the inverse of tangent of three halves. If you want to use the fraction, that's fine too. So my value is 56.309 and so on. But the directions originally said round to the nearest degree. So my reference angle is going to be 56 degrees. And then I need to know quadrant two and quadrant three. So because you may not know your reference angles as well, because this is an arbitrary number, it is not one of our special angles, I'm going to use my calculator. Quadrant 2 is going to be 180 minus 56. So my first angle is going to be 124 degrees. And then quadrant 4 is going to be 360 minus my reference angle of 56 degrees, which gives me 304. So that is solving first degree trig equations. You need to solve your equation as you would any other equation, if it was a linear equation with a variable. Then you are going to find what quadrant it is in based on your trig function and your positive or negative value. Find your reference angle. If it's from the chart, you should know it. If it's not from the chart, you're going to be able to use the calculator second sine, second cosine, or second tangent, and then take that reference angle and apply it to whichever quadrants you previously made a note of.